So many people make this mistake and now you never will. So here's a question. What happens to the atoms when sugar dissolves in water? Here's what a molecule of sugar looks like. It's got two carbons, four hydrogens, and two oxygen atoms. And a grain of sugar, like the kind that you would actually dissolve in water, looks like this. It's a clump of a bunch of these sugar molecules, and they're all clumped together. So anyway, we have, have a clump of sugar, a grain of sugar like this. We dissolve it in water. What do, these, what do these atoms actually look like after it's dissolved? Here are two choices, okay? Does it look like this, where the molecules have separated out and are floating around in the water? Or does it look like this, where the sugar has broken apart into all the atoms that make it up? Is it this one or this one? Well, it turns out the atoms do not break apart when sugar dissolves. Instead, the right answer here is that the molecules uh, stay as molecules and they float around in the water. So you might be thinking, wait, 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 I, I thought that if something dissolved in water, it meant that the atoms came apart. And you might even be thinking of words like dissociation that mean atoms coming apart when something dissolves. This is half right, but it's only ionic compounds that have their atoms come apart when they dissolve. Here's an example. So sodium chloride, also known as table salt, is an ionic compound. And that's because it's made of a metal, sodium, and a nonmetal, chlorine. And a grain of salt would look like this, made of sodium ions, Na+, connected to chloride ions, Cl-, because they have opposite charges. They're ions that have opposite charges and they stick together with ionic bonds. So, if we took a grain of salt and we dissolved it in water, this is what we'd see. The sodium and chloride that make up the grain of salt would come apart like this and we would get individual atoms floating around in the water. So the bonds that held these atoms together, the ionic bonds, were able to come apart and let the atoms float around. So that we can say ionic bonds can come apart when stuff dissolves. But we are talking about sugar here. And sugar is a covalent compound because it's made up of nonmetals, carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen. All of these atoms are connected together in a molecule like this, where each of these atoms is connected by covalent bonds. And if we were to look at a grain of sugar, it would look like this, with a whole bunch of these molecules sort of lumped together. So, we take this grain of sugar and we dissolve it in the water, and this is what we're gonna see. We're gonna see that the grain of sugar comes apart into the individual molecules but all the atoms in the molecules, they're held together by covalent bonds, and they're not coming apart. So we're not going to get individual atoms. And we can say that covalent bonds that hold together these atoms in a covalent complex, that hold together the atoms in a molecule, covalent bonds do not come apart when stuff dissolves. So we've got ionic bonds coming apart. We've got covalent bonds sticking together when things dissolve. So something's made of all nonmetals like sugar. It's covalent, and it means that these bonds between atoms are not going to come apart when it dissolves in water. So you are not going to get individual atoms like this. Instead, you're going to get entire molecules floating around in the water, and that's what it looks like when covalent compounds like sugar dissolve in water.